We're going to spend a little bit of time connecting back to some of the ideas we learned in intro statistics to try and close a bit of a loop and also motivate the um, use of Poisson regression as well as survival analysis which will be coming up and show how these ideas connect to and build on top of material that's presented in an intro stats foundational type course. So the first thing I want to do <coughs> is is mentioned the Poisson process, which typically gets covered in intro stats or intro probability. <clears throat> and this is used when we're looking at events that occur independently over time. Um, so if we're counting, the example I'm going to use is the number of times someone visits a physician in a year, or we're looking at the number of earthquakes that happen in a particular region in a year, maybe the number of car accidents at a particular intersection over a specified period of time. Things like these. So events that occur independently over time. And this process is defined by its rate, okay, which we use lambda to represent. And this is the mean, right, or average number of occurrences per unit time. Right? So why the number of occurrences per unit time? And in this process, it's assumed to be constant, that the rate is always the same. It doesn't increase or, or decrease over time. So thinking about this process, um, let's use the example of the number of visits to a doctor or physician per year. And let's suppose that on average, there's three visits per year. Right? So we're gonna suppose that we know this for now, right? living in this pretend or theoretical world. We know that on average, there's three visits to a physician per year. Questions we might wanna ask in this kind of context. The first one is we might wanna ask about um, why. So you can see this as why, the rate is y over t, number of occurrences per unit time. So we might want y to be the random variable. We ask about well, how many times does the event occur in a specific period of time? So if on average people go see a physician three times per year, what's the probability someone doesn't go at all in a year? Or what's the probability someone goes five or more times in a year? So this sort of question gives rise to the Poisson random variable or the I'm just going to say the Poisson probability distribution. We can use that if we want to try and model the number of times the event occurs in a specific period of time. The other type of questions we can ask is how much time goes by until the event occurs again. So if I start counting now, how long until someone goes to see a physician? This gives rise to the exponential. the exponential random variable, um, which uh, we use the exponential probability distribution for. So these are both theoretical probability distributions, very much like the normal distribution. Right? These are also very much connected to each other. We'll build some of those connections. What I want to say here is Poisson distribution is the foundation for Poisson regression. It's the underlying probability distribution. Just like linear regression, the underlying probability distribution was the normal. For logistic regression, the underlying probability distribution was the binomial. And here, the underlying probability distribution is the Poisson distribution. And the exponential distribution is the underlying probability distribution in survival analysis. So what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time here talking about the Poisson distribution. Again, recapping some of the stuff you typically see um, at the intro or foundational level, and then building on that and showing where we're going to go with some of that theory. So the Poisson distribution, this theoretical probability distribution. Let's stay on that same example, so I'll just rewrite it here. So suppose that we know um, lambda equals 3, which is the number of physician visits in a year. And we can say let y be the number of visits in a year. So 
We know lambda is three, the rate is three. On average, people go three times per year. We're gonna think about one individual and we're gonna count the number of times they go to a physician in a year. We would say that this follows a Poisson probability distribution with a rate of three, right? Or all right, three per year. Three visits per year. Okay, so in an intro stats or intro probability course, you tend to learn about the Poisson probability distribution. And a reminder, we're living in this pretend world where we say, suppose we know this, right? We know the true rate at which the events occur. We know that the number of visits follows a Poisson distribution. And then you learn to answer questions. What's the probability that y equals little y? Right? So what's the probability the number of visits in a year is zero? or one, or two. And this you can work out e to the negative lambda, lambda to the power of y over y factorial. Right. So you learn to answer questions like that. What's the probability someone goes at least once a year? Or what's the probability they go no more than four times? Right. You answer problems like that. Um, we do have a video online showing how you can do these calculations in R if you wanted to. The Poisson distribution has a few features that are worth mentioning here. The mean is also equal to the variance, which is equal to the rate. So if on average someone goes three times per year, right, that's the mean, the variance is also three. Or the standard deviation for the Poisson is the square root of lambda, the square root of the rate. Okay, so this was living in the pretend world where you say, suppose we know the truth, right? We know the rate at which people visit a physician. What's the probability of seeing certain things when we collect some data? So this was very similar to what we do with like normal distribution type calculations, right? We know the mean, we know the standard deviation, we know the population is normally distributed. What's the probability of seeing certain things happen? Now, where we're going, So this is all the foundation. Pretend we know the truth. What can show up when we collect some data? Theoretical probability distributions. So now we're going to acknowledge that we don't know the rate. So in reality, we don't know how often people go see a physician, or we don't know the rate which people are dying, the rate which uh, people are being born, the rate which people are contracting diseases. We don't actually know the rates. We must estimate them. Okay. We have to collect some data and try and estimate them. And the rate depends on other things. So if we're thinking about the number of times someone goes to see a physician in a year, well, that might depend on um, do they tend to be healthier or sicker. Um, if we're thinking um, in an American context, do they have health insurance or not? Um, are, they, are they male or female? Right? Males tend to go a bit less than females for uh, reasons we won't get into. Um, okay, but so there's other variables that are going to affect the rate. Right? The rate is not the same for everyone. What we can do is use Poisson regression, which we're going to build up. We're going to start talking about the model shortly. For now, I'm going to state what the model is, and we'll build our way to it. But this estimates the rate, or lambda, as an exponential function of the x variables. So you can see it looks, again, sort of similar to what logistics look like. But rather than saying we know the rate, we're going to move to a world where we don't know the rate which things happen. We have to estimate it. And it actually depends on other things. We can use Poisson regression to say, given the x variables, what is the estimated rate? And then, like before, we can take that and sub that in here. Rather than know the rate, we can say, well, here's our estimate of the rate. 
But we also um, tend to do it at intro stats level, just to build one more connection. Intro stats uh, and or intro epi. You learn about relative risks. So I'm just going to abbreviate RR. Um, relative risks are sometimes risk ratio, rate ratio. And a lot of different terms get used for the same concept. There's slight differences between risk ratio and rate ratio. I won't get into that here. From, for the most part, people tend to use them interchangeably. There are subtle differences, like I said, that's uh, for a separate, separate day. But so this is where you look at things like the rate, say, of disease, given someone's exposed to a risk factor, over the rate of disease, given they're not exposed. Okay. So how does the disease rate change for exposed relative to unexposed? You learn to calculate things like that. Now what we're acknowledging is, said, but there may be confounding. So there may be um, other variables confounding the effect of exposure. Right? The exposed might be older on average than the unexposed, and older people might be more likely to get the disease. So there might be confounders we need to adjust for, um, all these other types of variables we've been talking about in the course. Poisson regression, we can also, like logistic regression, right? we can think of modeling the probability of the outcome, or we model the log odds of the outcome. So if we want to make this into a linear function, right, to look like um, linear regression or a generalized linear model, how could we get rid of this e? Right? If we take the log of it, so if we take the log of the rate, we're going to model the log rate as a linear function of the x variable. With Poisson regression, we can also think of as we're going to model the log rate at which events occur as a linear function of x's. We're now back to a um, linear model, right? Here's the generalization we've done. And one thing we're going to see, I'll go over the explanation again in a separate video, but it's the exact same idea as what we saw for logistic regression. If we exponentiate this, it's going to give us a rate ratio. Right? This coefficient is going to tell us how does the log rate change for x1. When, um, when we exponentiate that, it's going to give us a rate ratio. Okay, and again, I'll go over the explanation in a separate video, but it's going to be the exact same explanation we saw for logistic regression. So, right. The rate ratio adjusted for x2, x3, and so on. So again, we can take stuff we learned in an intro course and say, well, if there's going to be confounding. We can statistically adjust for confounding using a regression model. Okay, so again, what I wanted to do here was just kind of close a bit of a loop, talk about things you typically see um, early on in kind of intro courses and where we're going to go with this now that we're moving um, one step closer to reality where we're acknowledging we have to estimate things and how we can estimate them as a function of a bunch of variables as well as how we can statistically adjust for confounding using regression models. Stick around, guys. There's more to see and please stay safe.